Thank you, Father Bauer, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and my brothers. I've never enjoyed having a fellow seminarian brother ask me to give my vocation talk. Why? Part of it being I wasn't struck by lightning, or two by four, or anything else spectacular. The other part is because of the hurt and lies involved in my discernment. But here I am, terrified of public speaking, ready to delve into the journey, albeit short, of my vocational walk with the Lord. Growing up, I was your average homeschooled, cradle Catholic kid. When my medieval Lego armies were not tearing each other to pieces, <laughs> I was playing mass with my younger siblings. For me, priesthood was always just another career, something that could be considered alongside a policeman or a soccer player. I never seriously thought about the priesthood until the eighth grade. We were living in Brunswick, Ohio at the time, and there was a Catholic church only two minutes from our house. My mom would take us to daily mass two days a week. Those were the two days on which my best friend also went with his family. When my best friend started to serve the daily mass, I immediately became interested and went through the training process. Soon enough, I was up there with him. <coughs> I was up there with him whenever we were at mass. A couple weeks after that, a new pastor was assigned to our parish, Father William Krisner, recently chaplain at Holy Name High School. He was the first priest for me that felt real and normal, not some high-ranking person with more important stuff to do than talk with a ridiculously introverted eighth grader. The new priest forced me to come out of my shell in the sacristy beforehand, and we became fast friends. I began to come to daily mass more often, not always for the Eucharist, but often to just be around this short, energetic, gentle priest. He really opened up for me another side of the priesthood, one outside the Eucharist, confessions, staff meetings. He became my priest hero, and God willing, you'll hear about him next year. As for me, priesthood again popped into my mind, especially serving four days a week, I couldn't help but uh, receive any of those uh, graces, whether noticeable or unnoticeable, that I received. But unfortunately, there was the other circumstances that forced priesthood into my mind. It was also around this time that a girl admitted to me that she had a crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> Homeschoolers must be pretty darn attractive, huh? <laughs> I didn't exactly know how to handle this uh, new bit of information, <laughs> but I played along. <laughs> it was not long before her feelings seemed to change. To put it bluntly, she began to act like she hated me and that I was the worst person ever, no matter how hard I tried to be nice. To take my heart and twist it like that hurt, and it was then I decided I would join the seminary after my high school career. So I reached this, this decision not just based on what I discerned in prayer, but on the lie that no girl in her right, right mind would like me. And so I went through high school, staying true to my discernment. Dating and girls quickly became a false dream, something not even remotely intended for me. I crushed every attraction and desire for dating, calling it evil, thinking of only the good side, the seminary. In my senior year of high school, I applied to SJV, got accepted, and started on the road of two years that have led up to this point. I have not regretted my decision, and I thank God for leading me here, even under the circumstances. The road has not been without its many bumps, <coughs> like last, especially last year when I tried to force my discernment, tired of waiting on the Lord. But I come back from my third year because I want to discern, if I want to discern right. No one likes uncertainty, foremost myself. But I'm willing to close my eyes and, though reluctantly, give the controls back to God. Our brothers, the Lord will guide us down the right path he has for us, but only if we let him. My question for you is, do you trust him enough to lead you into the darkness and uncertainty that is the future? Praise be Jesus Christ.